Hi and welcome. The topic for today is don't be moved by feelings and emotions. And so, feelings like to make us fear it's false evidence appearing real. Too many of us are moved by our feelings and we tend to focus on how we are feeling in moments of crisis. What do I mean with that? Well, when I started walking in the prophetic, I saw that people were looking at how they are feeling to affect how they prophesy. These are now prophetic people and prophets in the prophetic circles. And some of them, when they were very feeling very good and had a good day, they would prophesy accurately. But when they were feeling low or insecure, they would have problems uh, prophesying. And in my life, from as you could say with the American expression, off the bat, from the very beginning, God trained me not to look at my senses and my feelings and my emotions. And at the time, I didn't understand it. But now that I've been operating as a prophet for a while and things to the supernatural, I actually realized it was a blessing in disguise. What I mean with that, if you make the habit of looking how you are feeling, or what your emotional state or well-being is to determine are you going to operate in the supernatural or not, or is your miracle going to come or not, you are on shaky ground. <laughs> you are building on a quicksand foundation instead of on the rock. And so it's a trap of the enemy to trap you to look at your feelings or your emotions or, or what is going on around you to determine what is going to be the outcome of something you're trusting or a crisis. And so the devil lies to us to make the fear, which is false evidence, to appear real. But if you train yourself not to look at your emotions or how you're feeling, if you've had a good day or not, then you are consistently always operating in the supernatural. Proverbs 28, 26 says, those who trust their own insight are fools, but anyone who walks in wisdom is safe. So in other words, you must train yourself not to look at that I have a bad start today, that I get out of the wrong side of the bed, do I feel overwhelmed, do I feel insecure, do I feel nothing is going to work, and then start speaking negative words and operating under a curse by saying this will never happen for me. Because your feelings lies to you. Our feelings cannot be trusted. We have to understand Proverbs 28, 26 says, what's going on on the inside is foolish. It doesn't determine the outcome on the outside. Your faith determines the outcome. Jeremiah 79 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And so today I want all of you to make a quality decision if you've never operated like this before, never to look at how you're feeling. I can remember in the prophetic, as I was breaking out, I was invited to a women's uh, event on a Saturday and I took one of my prophetic friends with me and I said, we're going to prophesy over everyone. And he said, that's great. He thought it was a very small group. And when we arrived, there were 15. And he said, no, that's a lot. This is like way in the beginning of a prophetic walk. 15 might have been a lot for us. He says, I don't feel I can do it. I said to him, but we don't operate on how we feel. And I saw the distinction between how God had trained me not to look at my feelings and the, what is going on around me and let it influence me, but just walk by faith and not by sight. And he had difficulty getting through everything. I said to him, you don't prophesy by yourself. You prophesy by the Spirit of God. And we are not led by what we see. And we have to be ready in season and out of season. And then I started understanding what the Bible says, be ready in season and out of season. We might feel that we are not prepared. And then we act accordingly. We drop the ball. Because our feelings lie to us. And Satan is constantly trying to shift your focus on looking how you are feeling and perceiving things. Because if you can shift your focus, then you are on shaky ground. You, The house doesn't have a sure foundation. Anymore. And so, 
in the beginning, it's a little bit difficult when you start walking by faith and not by sight. But in the long run, whether I'm mad, glad, sad, depressed, or happy, I'm always able to operate in the supernatural because I don't let I don't look at my mood and my emotions and how I'm feeling to determine how am I going to operate in the supernatural. Something that shocked me when I got married, after a season of two, three years of marriage, my wife said, you are very consistent operating in the supernatural and giving prophetic word. And that's because I've learned I must not listen to my feelings. My feelings lie to us. So if I ask you, show me your faith. What does your faith look like? If I say to somebody that's listening to my voice now and I say, show me what your faith looks like. You cannot show me your faith because faith cannot be perceived by the five senses or the emotion, emotions. And that is what the devil does not want you to understand or realize. That for you to operate in your supernatural, you can be at your lowest low. You can feel depressed. You can feel sad. You can feel overwhelmed. But your feelings doesn't stop you from operating in the supernatural. Because the Bible says we must walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, not how we feel. It takes time, like a comrade's runner starting out for the first time. They've never run to the they've never ran a mile or a kilometer. And you put your running shoes on and now you run your first mile and you're very unfit and you're huffing and puffing and blowing and you say this is hard work. It might be a little bit difficult in the beginning, but as you practice it and exercise it every day, it becomes easier and easier until you're so disconnected from how you feel that you don't internalize and find out what is your emotional well-being before you operate in the supernatural. 2 Corinthians 5.7 says, For we live by believing and not by seeing. But unfortunately, the enemy wants to trap us that we look at how you are feeling and what he always wants to do is to make false evidence appear real. Say, for example, you are trusting for a job. You are at the end of your finances. There's no more money in the bank. In the next two weeks, you need to start a job or you're going to be out on the streets. Now you are feeling at, you are looking at your situation and how desperate it feels. You are saying to yourself, there's not enough money. I don't have income. I don't know what I'm going to do. I won't find a job in two weeks. I feel depressed. I feel unhappy. I feel that it is hopeless. And then that is what you have. Looking at your feelings and eating your feelings is not going to change the situation. You have to rather eat the word of God. And so don't let Satan pull you into the fear realm where it's false evidence appearing real. Because whether you are bold and courageous or whether you feel depressed or under pressure and insecure and overwhelmed, the truth is you can have your miracle as long as you don't eat your feelings. Hebrews 11 one says, and the heading there was great examples of faith for this paragraph. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence, evidence of things we cannot see. And so why is that important? Because whether you eat your feelings or not, or whether you're bold or not, as long as you don't look at the false evidence that the devil is trying to make appear real, and you focus and hope for on the things that you cannot see, your faith is pulling it into reality. And God calls this great examples of faith, because that is faith in action. And so if you wanted to look at an example to show faith, this is how you show faith. When you don't look at your feelings, you don't look at your emotions, you don't look at the calamity and the situation that you are in, but you are focusing on the thing that you cannot see, the thing that you are waiting for is the evidence of your faith. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. This is very important. I trained myself, not, I was very insecure. You might not believe it now, but I was so insecure, I couldn't even minister to a broom handle without my knees trying to have fellowship. That's shaking legs for those who didn't get it. I was very insecure. And so I had insecurity and 
and doubt and I was depressed and all these emotions all the time. And God didn't take that away. Instead, he trained me not to look at it. He said to me, you don't prophesy by, by your feelings. You don't prophesy by your emotional well-being. And when I learned that lesson, he said, well, now everything that is connected to the supernatural, you don't look at your feelings to step into that world. And I realized I could be feeling insecure and overwhelmed and depressed and sad. But if I don't focus on that and I just focus on the thing I have to do, which is prophesy over someone, I step out of the boat and I walk on water. And I've systematically been training myself that I don't look how I feel. I don't, I don't even think about it anymore. And it's easy for me to step into the supernatural, not just giving prophecy, because I've trained myself. And so this is just the clever trap of the enemy for you to look at your five senses and your emotion, and then he starts making false evidence appear real. When I consistently started operating in the supernatural by not looking at my five senses and my emotions anymore, Satan stopped trying so hard to give me insecurity and fear and all the other nonsense that goes with it because he realized he's just wasting his time. And so we don't look at the troubles we can see now, your emotions, your doubts, your fears, your feelings. We fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. And you must understand whether your emotions are out of control or not. You don't need them to operate in the supernatural. So don't let Satan block you before it is even begun, because that's often what happens. Satan is trying to stop you from taking the first step. Because as you take the first step, it means you are doing your works to accompany, accompany your faith. What does that mean? Peter had the faith to walk on water, but until he took the first step, it didn't come into existence. And so Satan is very hard pressed trying to paralyze you with fear, your emotions and your well-being and how you're feeling so that you cannot take the first step. Because when you take the first step, you break free. God and the word is the source. We look to God and the word, not at how we are feeling. Proverbs 3, 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your straight your path or some translations say path straight. And so this is something that I learned in the beginning of my walk with Christ and with God that I can trust in God because I seek him in all my ways and that he has my back, he's my safety net. If I miss it because of my own understanding of my own wrongdoing, but I am trusting that he is a loving father who is protecting me and guarding me and looking after me, that everything will work out right. And that is exactly what has happened. Mm -hmm. There were some situations that it was dangerous for me with the people in my life that I didn't know they were dangerous trying to destroy me and cause me harm. They pretended to be a friend, but I just trusted God. I trusted God above that situation and God protected me. And so the two things that you must focus on, what, what I'm trying to say is you need to focus on God. You need to trust in God. You need to focus on the word. You need to trust the word because unlike your emotions, God and his word does not change. Psalms, Psalm 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And so I have learned that I don't look at myself because I am imperfect and I'm a sinner and I will fall and fail. And that's a constant. And so if I focus on my feelings and my shortcomings and everything that I'm feeling and going through and wondering about and stressing about, I will never take the first step and then Satan will successfully paralyze me. So my emotions change. And so I realized I need to change on an immovable thing, an immovable object. God and his word is the source. I look to God's word. I look to God. I trust in God. I trust the word. And so the secret not to eating your emotions and letting fear being real is not 
to look at the fear or the emotions, but to look to God and to look to the word. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my strong. This is actually even my WhatsApp message because I've learned in the middle of the storm, whether in season or out of season, whether I feel ready or I don't feel ready, or I feel I'm confident and bold, or I feel overwhelmed and insecure, the word is always constant. I look to God and his word, and then I step out, out of the boat. It sounds simple, but you need to practice it, and it will become real in your life. God and the word is our source. We look to God and the word and not our feelings. Psalms 121.2, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. Now, Satan doesn't want you to believe this. Mm -hmm. Satan will try to discredit God, to say, God has failed you. You have missed it. You didn't pray right. What is it? What's the use of even praying? What's the use of God? Trusting God. You're not producing miracles in your life. Nothing's ever coming right. But I decided I'm going to believe Psalm 121 verse 2, whether it works in my life or not. God didn't have to prove it to me. I just decided in my heart, I'm going to believe my help come, comes come from the Lord. And he's the maker of heaven and earth. And Psalm 73, 26 says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This is currently my WhatsApp scripture. The previous one used to be. What am I saying here? I may miss it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So therefore I will stand and succeed. And so what are we trying to teach you today? Emotions is a very powerful feeling. And it can overrule you. It can make you bold. It can make you paralyzed. It can make you afraid. And they are not to be trusted because they change like the weather here today and one tomorrow. And God wants us to be ready in season and out of season. Whether we think we are prepared or whether we think we are strong or whether we feel we are being overwhelmed, we must learn to totally disregard our emotions. Right, if you are feeling bold, run with that. But if you are feeling sad and depressed and overwhelmed, switch them off because you can. How do you do that? You focus on God. Psalm 121, 2. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God is busy helping me. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength, so I can do this. I look at the word, which is the solid foundation, the rock on which I stand. God cannot change. His word cannot fail. And even though I feel insecure and I feel like I cannot step out of the boat, I'm going to prophesy because the Bible says I can. I'm going to pray for the blind eye to open because the Bible says I can. Even though I don't know where my finances or my provision is coming from, I'm going to say I am blessed and I'm going to stand on the scripture and slay my giants and decree that I will eat the fat of the land. I will taste and see the Lord is good. And so I encourage you today, especially as we now at the end of the end, entering turbulent times where our emotions might not want to play along, to stop looking at how you are feeling. Because in actual fact, the way that you are feeling does not determine your miracle. It's what you focus on and what you allow to listen to that will give you the victory. Thank you for watching.